Hey everyone, it's Justin again. In this lesson, we're gonna use coordinate notation to describe some of the reflections that we've worked with in our previous lessons. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to use coordinate notation to describe reflections. First, we'll learn how to write coordinate notation for four examples from our previous reflection lessons. And then we'll complete two additional examples similar to what you'll see in your practice. Remember that in our previous lessons, we learned how to reflect six different ways. In this lesson, we're gonna learn how to write notation for four of these. This notation is really helpful because it gives us a short and quick way to describe our transformation to others, and it makes it easy for others to do the same for us. Do you remember this problem? This is the first reflection we looked at a few lessons ago. If you don't remember this, pause the video now and go back in your notes to review. Our goal for this lesson is to write a notation that describes what happened to our points when we reflected them. Let's look for patterns first. What change do you see in the coordinates when we go from A to A prime? Check if that same change happens in all the rest of these. Hopefully, you figured out that the x values stayed the same and the y values switched signs. Let's write the coordinate notation for this. We know we started with an x value and a y value for each of the points in our pre-image. We can write that as x comma y in parentheses. Then we draw an arrow and write what happened to x and y. So what happened to all the x values when going from our pre-image to our image? Nothing. They stayed exactly the same. And we show that by just writing x again. Then we find a way to write what changes happened to our y values. Can you describe what happened to them? They all changed signs. Positive y values became negative, and if we had any negative y values in our pre-image, they would have become positive. So, we have our answer. This is the coordinate notation to describe a reflection over the x-axis. Here's another problem that we worked through a few lessons ago. This time we were reflecting over the y-axis. Go ahead and write the coordinate notation to represent this reflection. Pause the video now and see how far you can get on your own. We always want to start by looking for patterns. It looks like the x value changes signs, but the y value stays exactly as it was in the pre-image. We verify that the same change happens in all the rest of these points. Now that we know the pattern, we just have to use coordinate notation to write it. We know that we started with an x value and a y value for each of the points in our pre-image. So we write that as x comma y in parentheses. Then we draw an arrow to write what happened to x and y. So what happened to all the x values again? They changed signs. And we show that by writing negative x. Then we write what happened to our y values and we already figured out that they didn't change. So we just write y to show that they stayed the same as they were in the pre-image. Now, this is our answer. This is the coordinate notation to describe a reflection over the y-axis. You've seen this problem before too. Try writing the coordinate notation for this reflection. Pause the video now so you can try it. We can see that the x value and y value switch places when we go from our pre-image to our image. The hardest part can be finding the pattern, but now that we know it, we just have to write the notation. We always start with an x value and a y value for each of the points in our pre-image. So we write that as x comma y in parentheses, and then we draw an arrow to write what happened to x and y. We figured out that all the x values moved to become the y values. To show this, we're gonna write x in the second part of the parentheses. Then we write what happened to our y values. 
And we know that the Y values in our pre-image became the X values in our image. That's the reason we write Y in the first part of the parentheses for our image. And that's our answer. This is the coordinate notation to describe a reflection over the line Y equals X. Here's the final problem we're taking from a previous lesson. Pause the video now and try finding the pattern and writing the notation one more time. This time the X values and Y values switch places when we go from our pre-image to our image and change signs too. Now that we know the pattern, let's write it in notation. We represent the X and Y values we started with by writing X comma Y in parentheses and draw that arrow again to show what happened. We can see that all the X values moved to become the Y values and also switched signs. So to show this, we write negative X in the second part of the parentheses. Now we write what happened to our Y values. The Y values in our pre-image became the X values in our image and changed signs too. So that's why we're gonna write negative Y in the first part of the parentheses. And that's our answer. This is the coordinate notation to describe a reflection over the line y equals negative x. Now that we know how to write coordinate notation for four types of reflections, let's do two problems similar to what you'll see in your practice problems for this lesson. Here's the first problem. It says, given the pre-image, point C, and the coordinate notation of the reflection, write the coordinates of the image, point C prime. What type of reflection is occurring? Why don't you pause the video now and think through this on your own? Our coordinate notation tells us that X stays in the same position. We can write negative four as the X value of our image. Then we go back to our notation and see that the Y value changes signs. Our original Y value is two, so we change the sign and write negative two. Then we have to either draw these points of the coordinate plane to help us visualize where the reflection occurs, or remember what we have in our notes. We saw earlier in the lesson that this coordinate notation represents a reflection over the X axis. Now we have both parts of our answer. Here's the second problem. It says, given the image point E prime, and the coordinate notation of the reflection, write the coordinates of the pre-image, point E. This is a tough question because now we're gonna have to work backwards to find the pre-image. Pause the video and see what you can come up with. Our coordinate notation tells us that negative X is three. We can write that as an equation and solve for X by dividing or multiplying by negative one. We place the value we found for x in the beginning of our pre-image coordinate. We can also see that negative y is equal to negative one. We can again divide or multiply by negative one to see that y equals one. So we write one as the y coordinate in our pre-image. Setting up equations and solving can help us to work backwards to find the pre-image. Now you can use coordinate notation to describe reflections over four specific lines. Make sure you have some awesome notes before moving on to those practice problems. See you next time.